Okay, assalamualaikum and uh, good morning everybody. Uh, could somebody please recite the doa? Huh? Okay. Okay, go ahead, Shafiq. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wa al-mursalim wa ala ahli wa sahbihi ma'in. Ya Allah, ya Tuhan kami, bukakanlah ke atas kami nikmat ni, nikmat ni. Dan limpahkanlah ke atas kami tazanah rahmat ni. Tambahkanlah ilmu kami dan luaskanlah kefahaman kami. Wahai Tuhan kami, yang maha pemurah lagi maha penyayang. Ya Allah, sungguhnya kami berlindung dengan ni. Daripada ilmu yang tidak memberi manfaat, doa yang tidak dimakbulkan, hati yang tuk dan nafsu yang tidak terpuaskan. Ya Allah, Tuhan kami, lapangkanlah gede kami, mudahkanlah segala urusan kami dan lepaskanlah simpulan lidah kami. Agar mereka mengerti perkataan kami. Maha suci engkau, tidak ada yang kami tahui selain daripada apa yang telah engkau ajarkan kepada kami. Sesungguhnya engkau lah yang maha tahui lagi maha bijaksana. Rabbana adina fi dunia hasanah, wa fil ahirati hasanah, wa tunna zahumai. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Okay, thank you. Syafiq. Syafiq. Okay, uh, as usual, uh, three quotation. Anybody want to go for it? Just give me your name and the number that you want. Uh, so, can I take the third one? The third one? Uh, Siapa uh, tu? Uh, my name oh. is Hock Seng. Hock Seng, eh? Yeah. Okay, Hock Seng. Can I take the first one? It's from Hazim. Hazim, first one, eh? Yes, Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad Hazim. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I take this. Uh, who, who's that? Who, who's that? Uh, for number two? Uh, Adam Daniel. Adam. Uh, Daniel. Adam Daniel. Okay, Adam Daniel. Number, number two, eh? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Okay, so go ahead, Hazim. We are creatures that like to blame the external, not realizing that the problem is usually eternal. So this quote uh, means like usually people can uh, always blame the other people around them and and point out others' fault, but not realizing that uh, so that they themselves make the same mistake. And you can see nowadays that people always to find others mistake although they make the same mistake like others that is all yeah okay thank you azib uh adam go ahead adam okay for the second quote as i look back on my life i realized that every time i was being rejected of something good I was actually being redirected. It has decreed is most appropriate and most beneficial for you. So, uh, from my understanding for this quote is that uh, if what we want that uh, if we plan something and we don't get what we want, so we must always believe that uh, the other result is better for us. We must all always think like that. That's all for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Adam. Okay, Hossein, go ahead. Do not allow your heart to take pleasure with the presence of people, not be saddened by their condemnation. So, from what I understand from this quote is, um, try to be yourself and don't care about the others. Uh, for example, if if you achieve some accomplishment. Certainly, you can receive the presence from the others, but at the same time, you cannot 
satisfy yourself. You, you need to keep on moving your heart. And, and there is one God saying that uh, be a better person today than you were yesterday. Uh, but at, the, at another side, if you receive, how is it? If you receive some condemnation or criticism, my suggestion is you can listen or ignore that, but don't be crushed by it. And lastly, we are engineer, not a judge. So it's not our job to condemn people. So that's all from my sharing. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Osei. Okay. Okay. Uh, we are creatures that love to blame the external, not realizing that the problem is usually internal. Okay. Uh, that's normal for human. Okay. So actually don't try to do that because normally every night before you go to sleep, just uh, we call muhasabah dari, look at what we have done today. Okay. Not uh, just finding other people faults. Normally that's what we do. Okay. When something went wrong, we try to blame others. Okay. And this uh, especially, for example, if you are, you are talking about traffic right now, uh, when there is an accident, what happened? The quarrel at the roadside, not at the roadside. At the roadside is okay, but in the uh, in the middle of the road, okay, the quarrel in the middle of the road, and keep on blaming each other. Okay, uh, and uh, there's a Malay saying that kuman seberang laut kita nampak gajah depan mata kita tak nampak. That is what always happened to us. We rarely see our mistake, but we can easily, or we trying hard to find other people's mistake. Okay. So next time, whenever happen to us, okay, look at our fault first before looking at others. Okay. Then you'll be much better uh, person. Okay. Okay. Second one. As I look back. On my life, I realized that every time I thought I was being rejected from something good, I was actually being redirected to something better. You must convince your heart that whatever God has decreed is most appropriate and most beneficial to you. Okay? Always think positive. Normally, when we, like uh, Adam said, okay, when we work for something and we did not get it, okay, normally we will be frustrated. But remember, okay, Allah know best. He, he, he who created us, he know what best for his creation. Uh, uh, creation. Okay. So just think positive and move on. Go on, improve yourself. Okay. And always uh, praise, thank for what you get. Do not allow your heart to take pleasure with the praise of people, nor be saddened by their condemnation. Okay. okay, this is normally what happened. Okay, people always say praise you when you, you got something, okay, when you achieve something, but be careful with the praises. Okay, the praises will sunk you down. Okay, because you feel you are good enough. Okay, but don't be saddened by their condemnation. Take it as a challenge. Okay, so when people condemn you, the best way to respond is saying thank you. Okay. Say thank you to their condemnation and work hard to overcome. And look, sometimes it is true. What they said is true and we overlook it. Okay. So thank them for showing it uh, to you and challenge yourself to be a better person. But when people praise you or of course, you're going to say thank you, okay? But be careful with the praise, okay? Because you will be drowned by the praise and later you'll be, uh, not be a better person, but you already say, oh, I got, I got what I want. Oh, I'm good. I'm so on. So be careful with that, okay? okay. Always challenge yourself. Always think positive and always try to blame yourself rather than blaming people. Okay. Okay. Thank you, uh, Adam, for saying and uh, Hazim. Okay. And uh, as I, uh, I believe I did uh, post in uh, our group and uh, post in uh, not not yet in learning, believe. Okay. Our test gonna be.
twenty second, isn't it? Twenty second at uh, eight thirty p.m. If I'm not mistaken, isn't it? Betul tak? Test kita dua puluh dua hari bulan. Our second test. Oh uh, yes, twenty two June at eight p.m. Eight thirty p.m. Eight thirty p.m. So it's gonna be Wednesday, yeah? Twenty second. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so the test going to cover chapter 2 and chapter 3. So meaning that uh, the statistic and the traffic signal and the traffic signal going to be uh, according to the new ATJ uh, revision 2017. Okay. And I hope you did uh, the exercise. I believe after we finish one example, I give you two more uh, exercises uh, for you to, to go on and even even you can use the uh, past year question, uh, past year test, okay, to do the exercise, but try to design according to 2017, okay, not according to uh, nine, uh, 1387. And uh, I believe somebody somebody has shared that, that uh, did, did somebody share the, the new 2017? If not, I uh, just uh, look at the, the my my notes. All the uh, correction factor is uh, given in the notes, and those are the correction factor that you need to apply when you design the traffic signal. Okay, let's now continue with our, where is my Microsoft? Okay. Let's continue with our uh, geometric design. Okay, where is it? Didn't I share it? Okay. And, uh, Forgive me because uh, I rarely remember where we stop. Why? Because I got uh, one, two, three classes. Okay. I teach three classes in uh, traffic engineering and all now are in chapter four. So if I, I need to go through the recording, if I record, okay, sometimes I forgot the record, okay, uh, on where we stop. Okay. I believe this is where we stopped last time. Example four. Oh, correct me if I'm wrong. Because I believe we go through this one. Okay. On the, uh, how to calculate the LC, the T, the uh, E and the M. Okay. And then, uh, we look on how to determine or how to calculate the, Point, a starting point of the curve and the end point of the curve. Okay, and hopefully this is where we stop. Hopefully we are, uh, I'm on the right track. Okay, now let's look at this example four. Okay, it's so a very simple uh, example actually. Okay. Given to us the PI or the point of intersection is at chain H15 plus 20. Okay. And the radius of the curve, okay, is uh, 275 meter. And the deflection angle there is uh, 52 degree. Okay. Find the length of the curve, the station for PC and PT, and the LC, M, and E. Okay. So that, that is just uh, looking back at Allah Akbar. Okay, using all this uh, equation that uh, we have uh, seen last week. Okay, now. Take out my pen. Okay, 
given to us the deflection angle there, which is uh, what's that? Uh, I believe that is uh, 52 degree. Okay, and then given to us the radius and given to us the uh, intersection change. Okay, and they are looking for what is the change for PC, what is the change for PT, and what is the E. Okay, what is the M and what is the LC, for example. Okay, now, if you want to use this, okay, if you want to use this, fine. If you want to use degree of curvature, but you don't actually need to use the degree of curvature uh, to solve this uh, equation or to solve this problem. Why? Because, okay. Uh, where's the length of the curve? Okay. Oh, I, I just I just uh, uh, delete the length of the curve there. Okay. Now, how do we determine the length of the curve? Or how do we determine the... Uh, we already got the radius. How do we determine the, the length of the curve here? Okay. And to get the PC, what you need to do is you need to determine the tangent length. Is the length of the curve given to us? No, not given to us. Find the length of the curve, the station for PC and PT and all other relevant. Okay. So, what's the length of the curve? Okay, let's go back. The length of the curve is... Okay. I believe... I usually use that equation much, much simpler, okay, rather than using the deflection angle, okay, L equal to R 2 pi delta divided by 360, so our L is 2 pi 52, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, by 360. So we got, what do you got there? Two. Oh, where's the R? Okay, I missed the R. What do you get for the length of the curve? Anybody, what do you get for the length of the curve? Uh, I got 249.58. Okay, correct. 249.58. Okay, good. Okay, so you got... 249.58. Okay, that's the length of your curve. Okay, and then to find the uh, long chord, to find the tangent, to find the external distance, and to find the middle ordinates, okay, just plug in the equation. And this equation will be given to you, okay, in the, uh, in the final exam, the, the equation will be given to you, or since this is Actually, we're going to still have uh, open book final exam. Actually, if you didn't, did not give you the equation, you can uh, refer to the notes and find the equation. Okay. So, just plug in 2R sine theta over 2. You got 241. Okay. Where's that? Okay. If you draw this uh, curve here. Okay. The LC is this one. Okay. That's LC. 
Okay, let me use another color there. This is LC. Okay. And then you find the tangent. This is the tangent. Okay. That's the tangent. And then the E is that one. And the M is this one. Okay. Okay. You got the LC there. Okay. The tangent. Okay. The external ordinate and the middle ordinate. Okay. Just plug in the, the equation. Okay. As simple as that. Okay. But the value that we really need is this one. Okay. We need this value. Why? Because we need that to calculate or to determine the uh, beginning of curve and end of curve. So to find the beginning of curve, this is 15, 20. So just read 15, 20. Okay. Minus our 134.13. 134.13. Okay. Then you get 1385 and split that back into change, meaning that 13 plus, okay, plus 85.87. Okay. And to get the end of the curve, do not, okay, do not use uh, pi plus t okay do not use that why because the length of the curve is calculated along the uh, Allah the uh, the change of the end point is calculated along the curve okay along the curve not from pi okay but to calculate the pc you you need to subtract T from PI. To calculate the PT or end of the curve, you need the PI, uh, PC plus length of the curve. Okay. Do not plus T. So PT is PC plus length of the curve, which is 249.58. Okay. And then you got uh, 16, point, uh, 16 plus 35.47. Okay. This is the 249.58 there. Okay. Any question on this one? This is a, this is a very simple. I believe this is a, you already learned this in survey, engineering survey. Okay. You should, you should have learned this in engineering survey. Any question on this one? Okay. Just make sure that you did not calculate PT by uh, adding T to PI. Okay. So, won't say it's okay. Okay. So, let's uh, uh, proceed the same thing. I believe this is also the same thing. Okay. They, they use the same design. Okay. Now, This asking for degree of curvature. Calculate the maximum degree of cur curve, okay, and the minimum radius of a simple curve with an external angle of 100 and the design speed of 80 with the F maximum of 0 0.13 and the uh, super elevation of 10%. Okay, now what they are asking for is for you to find R. Okay. Given the design speed of AT, external angle there of 100. Okay. It's going to be the same here. Okay. 100. The external angle. With the F of 13% and maximum value of E, which is 10%. Uh, Okay, now, what formula are you going to use here? Let's go back to what we have seen before. 
which the formula for here r equal to v square one two seven e plus f okay so r equal to v square one two seven e plus f okay so we got 80 square divide by 127 e plus f Okay, so your R gonna be 219.103. Okay, as given here, 219.103. And how to determine the degree of curvature? The degree of curvature, okay, you can get it from there, okay, with the relation of R there, or Uh, what else? The easier degree of curvature. Allah, where am I going? Okay, just plug in here to, to get the, the, the degree of curvature for your uh, for this question. Okay, you can use this one if you want, even Okay, because uh, you already got the length of the curve. Okay, do you get uh, uh, that value, 7.97 uh, for the degree of curvature? Uh, yes, sir. Can get that. Uh... 7.97. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jose. Okay. The the other one, okay. This one. Uh, why did this stop here? Okay. Now, example 7N. So, meaning that this is uh, from the final uh, paper. Okay. A scalar curve connect to tangent that intersect at angle 48, uh, 48 degree. The point of intersection, 948 plus 2020. Okay. Assuming subfriction of 15%, super elevation of 8%, and the design speed of 96 km per hour, determine both point of tangent. Okay. Meaning that he has to find the PT and P what? PT and P, PV, yeah. Okay. And then explain the function of super elevation and how it was introduced in circular curve. Okay. This is something for you to, to explain. Okay. So, actually, in the calculation, most of people, most of the students can do the calculation well. But when it comes to explanation okay then we know who really understand and who just uh, concentrate on the calculation part okay now let's look at this one let me change the color okay let's click of connect the uh, two tangent intersect at angle 48 Okay, this is 48. The point of intersection, okay, given to you here is 948.2020. Okay, and then with your F of 15%, your E of 8%, and the design speed of 96, determine the point 
of the tangent. So they are asking for those two points. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to find what do you need to find there. You need to find L. In order for you to find L, you need R. Okay. In order for you to find R, you need T. Okay, so you need T there. And then, okay. So after you find the L, what you need to do is you take the chain is there, minus T. You got this chain edge. Okay, the starting, uh, the beginning of curve. And then you plus the L. You got the end of curve. Okay, chain is for end of curve. So they're asking for these two. Beginning of curve and end of curve. Okay. But in order for you to get that, you have to go through all these three. Okay, after you that, get that, and then explain the function of super elevation the function and how the super elevation introduced into the circular curve how do we put in the super elevation into the circular curve okay so i leave you with uh, that to uh, to ponder and i believe this is in uh, the the question is, is in the slide Okay, so you don't need to snap and put in uh, uh, an answered question uh, for them okay, because I believe it's in the slide. Okay, and if you solve it and then you run into problem, okay, you can post it in uh, the forum and then I hope the class will discuss. Okay, so when somebody posts in the forum, I really expect that other colleague will participate and discuss the uh, the problem or the solution that being posed by your friend in there okay if uh, there's no discussion meaning that uh, you did not benefit from what your friend share in the forum so when somebody posts in the forum make sure you go through and uh, read through it and then uh, post your discussion okay or you can even post the question okay maybe the person who posts it will reply or other person will reply and that will keep the change of posting okay and from the change of posting you will benefit from it okay that's what i expect uh, for you to get from this e-learning okay the second one example eight also, and I put the end, so meaning that that is from uh, again our final exam. A scalar curve road section to be designed for operating speed of 90 km per hour with a side friction of 10% and uh, 10 and super uh, 0.1 and the super elevation of 6%. Okay, determine the minimum radius of curve. Okay, normal, that's K for R. Determine the length of the curve okay l okay and as usual for you to get the l you need the t okay propose the change that can be made in the design of the curve if the radius available is 85 percent of the calculated value okay if i were this is not my question if i were to write this question i will not write this one because that is the hint to the, the answer. Okay. So what I'll do is I just said propose the change that can be made in the design of the curve if the radius available is 85% of the calculated value. Okay. And I will not put this one. Because this is the answer actually. Okay. That is part of the answer. Not the, not the only answer, but part of the answer. Okay. This question is supposed to be the open-ended question, meaning that you can come with various uh, uh, suggestions. Okay. This will uh, 
will be a higher level uh, bloom higher level uh, uh, bloom taxonomy of a higher level okay now given to you the operating speed given to you the stack friction and given to you the elevation of course you can find the radius of the curve you can find the uh, uh, length of the curve okay and actually what we are looking for is here because one and two is just st straight uh straight to the point question okay but number three will challenge to your idea what you can do if the radius available is only 85 percent okay this is what norm uh, we normally uh, face at the construction site okay even though you got the drawing and everything and then when you come to the construction site for example you are uh designing a radius you are constructing a, a curve okay going uh, circulating your whatever mountain or your hill or whatever and as you go and measure it okay remember you have to do the survey okay you measure it and you realize that you can only have 85 percent of the radius meaning that if you you get a uh, you design for a uh, whatever design radius okay your road will not be on the side of the hill but it will be somewhere in the air okay outside of the hill or you have to uh do the embankment you have to fill the area how are you gonna fill the the hill side then you have the problem of trying to solve the 85 percent there and then what do you suggest okay. normally this is what a uh, contractor will face and then the contractor will approach the consultant let's say you are the consultant okay. then you have to come with the the answer okay because normally when you design your your road okay you just design it on paper okay the consultant rarely go to the site they got the data from the surveyor and then they design it okay maybe based on aerial photograph maybe based on drone maybe based on uh, your uh, laser scanner or even maybe from your just uh, total station survey okay and then they design it and then when they put it into drawing they give it to the contractor okay and the contractor try to construct it aside and maybe the contractor will face the problem not maybe usually usually the contractor will face face the problem of trying to meet the design of the consultant so that is what you need you need to do okay in real life okay there is no easy thing like we learn in class just remember that real life is far more vicious compared to what you learn in class far more challenging compared to what you learn in class okay in the class the challenge is to wake up at eight and join my class okay. but in real life okay you have to be at site and okay you have to be let's say they said they have a meeting at nine normally they, they set the meeting at nine they did not set meeting at eight okay you have to be there okay and you have to prepare to be bombarded by uh, with questions from all parties involved okay the client the consultant the uh, local authority the jkr or whoever present in that uh, meeting okay and you have to be able to answer them intelligently okay. or you should be able to defend yourself okay from all those shooting all those bullets coming to you that is the reality okay where when you face that you said oh it's better for me to continue my my study okay it's much better when i'm uh, taking my degree compared to what uh, uh, i'm facing right now 
Okay, not 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 just to to not to to let's say to say to you is uh, difficult uh, when you are out there, but you have to accept it. It is not as what we expect. Okay, the same thing for this one. So try to uh, to solve it again because when I put the, all this question in, it's for you to do the exercise. Okay. Maybe some of you said, oh, very difficult for you to get the question. In fact, actually, we have the uh, shoot. We shoot. Huh? I, I'm not sure whether uh, SKA have it online. We should have. Uh, uh, what, 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 what do you call it? Uh, we should have uh, all the past year question. Okay. In our SKA library. And I'm not sure whether they uh, uh, digitize it and put it online because we submit the question to them. We give them the uh, soft copy. Okay. And they should be able to just uh, upload it and you can just uh, go through, download it and try to solve it. I'm not sure I did not check. But that's what it, uh, I expect from them because when uh, during the hard copy time, okay, we give, give them the question, okay, and then they print it and then they save the hard copy and they, they put it in the lab, uh, SKA library. Anybody know where the SKA library is? Our library, SKA library. Nasrin, tak tahu kat mana Nasrin? Uh, tak tahu kat mana Nasrin. So, is it at the M46 there? It is not M46, it is M48. I believe that the, 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 the one that close to the parking. Ah, uh, ground floor, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, that's the delivery. Okay, you can find the thesis. You can find all the past year questions over there. Okay, because uh, FKA should have them. Okay, and I'm not sure whether they they have it online. Okay, they should they should because uh, few years back I believe they are digitizing all those uh, thing and try to put them online. Okay, I'm not sure whether they have it online or not. Okay, why I say I'm not sure because when I ask. Uh, uh, my student to to do the past year question, they always ask me for the question. Okay, so I said, how come I I, I give to SKA? Why don't SKA take an effort, make an effort of uh, putting them online? Okay, and even the question is also available in UTM library. Okay. And they should already digitize them. Okay, knowing uh, from what they, they said they are good there, here and then they're, they're always good. Okay, so hopefully they have digitized them. Okay, those are the resources that you can, you can have. Okay, but uh, do check uh, if you are uh, physically present, do, do check in uh, uh, M40, M48 eh? Uh, the, the close close to the parking M48 eh? Or is it M40? M47? M40? Oh, M49? M48 eh? Saya pun tak tahu dah sebab bukan ada untuk you. You say you also. It is M? Uh, not sure about that but what I remember is for the surveying room is M47. <laughs> yes, M47 surveying room. Uh, the the one that uh your your common room there that is M forty nine or M forty eight. I'm not sure about that. I think <laughs> we need to check it out. <laughs> okay. Whatever it is, it is close to the the student parking over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the, the furthest one. Yes. Okay, not not close to M forty six. Okay, okay. That's uh on uh first floor. Is it? Oh, that's no ground. That's ground floor. Yeah, I think the bottom floor. Yeah. Uh, 
I think it's M48. M48 eh? M48. Oh, okay. So it is M48 ground floor. And uh, now they have a new librarian over there because uh, the the old one uh, just retired uh, about few, not few months, about months ago. Okay, retired. Okay, and they have a new library, uh, new SKA librarian here, there. Okay, and hopefully after this, we are no longer SKA, we are back to FKA. Okay, I'm waiting for that. Okay. Because SKA cannot perform well under under engineering faculty, and as, uh, FKA perform better on it, its own. That's what I I feel. Okay, working with uh, FKA for more than uh, thirty five years. Okay, when they come to SKA, a lot of uh, thing uh, cannot be accomplished. Okay. That's example eight, and I'm not sure what year is this. Okay, do we have any more? Okay, okay. Any question on simple circular curve? Okay, the simple circular curve meaning that when it says simple circular curve, okay, it is just the straight line, two straight uh, road connected by one Allah Akbar Kabiro. Connected by one curve. Uh, excuse my my drawing. Okay, connected by one simple curve with one radius. Okay, that is simple circular curve. Okay, but for road, which Designed for higher speed, we introduce transition curve. Okay. Why do we introduce transition curve? Okay, we'll look into it later. Okay. But normally, this simple circular curve, okay, being used for road with lower speed. Okay. But in US, they did use this for even higher speed, but with very large radius okay okay if you cannot uh, provide large radius uh, simple circular curve is not that comfortable to drive through okay any question on that simple circular curve okay i assume no question okay let's look at the transition or we call it spiral curve or combined curve. Some books said combined curve. Some books said uh, transition curve. Some said spiral curve. Okay. Okay. Transition curve different from circular curve. Why? Because transition curve has a radius from infinity starting at the tangent point going to the radius of the circular curve okay and then you enter the circular curve and then after that you coming out through transition curve again with the radius starting from your circular curve radius going back to infinity for the straight road okay that is transition curve okay circular curve of course easier to design compared to transition curve and much easier to set up at site okay but the comfort is not there okay and quite difficult to introduce the super elevation in just pure simple circular curve okay this is transition curve as i said okay starting from infinity here okay and then going to R here, okay? And then ending with R there, and then go back to infinity, okay? So this is your normal straight road. So instead of, we just put one, Allah Akbar Kabiro, one, mm, one circular curve here, 
okay we put the we put in transition and then circular and then transition okay so our normal circular curve will be shifted a little bit down okay in order for us to accommodate this two transition curve at both end and our circular curve will be much shorter compared to the original circular curve here okay it is shifted down and it is a little bit shorter okay to make way for transition curve but it is not the summation of uh, that transition curve okay because the transition curve varies from infinity to radius and then from radius back to infinity okay why do we put this transition curve okay we put this transition curve to make it more comfortable for the road user okay why because in transition curve we introduce the super elevation slowly so starting from let's say this is normal camber okay and then let, let's say we're going that way okay we increase the outside okay until it becomes zero and then become back to normal camber and then we rotate normally we rotate at the center that's what happened in the circular curve and then later it'll go back to to normal in the transition curve so we have ample space here to do that uh, uh, insertion of super elevation okay now when a vehicle enter or leave the circular horizontal curve the gain or loss is centrifugal force i believe you can feel that okay let's say if even though that road was designed with transition curve you will feel it if you drive faster than the design speed okay you will feel that you are being pulled to the side to the outside of the curve okay that is easily being uh you can observe during let's say the uh, race car in the racetrack or the motorcycle gp okay where if you can see when those bikers taking the curve what they are doing they are going on the outside of the curve and that is the best example of showing that you need to widen the curve uh, the 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 width of your uh, pavement at the curve okay they go outside they take the outside uh, uh curve to reduce the centrifugal force being uh, uh pushed to their their body and their motorcycle okay that is gp okay and the super elevation is introduced in gp it is there okay even though the super elevation is there you really say see okay let's say this is the curve they're taking okay you really see people going on the inside unless he try to overtake the pole position guy okay most of the guy will go outside here okay so if he go inside he has to be very careful in order for him to pass in front of this person because he can easily slide out that's the force that been pushing us to the outside of the the curve okay a properly designed transition curve will provide the following advantages first a natural easy to follow pass okay that's why those riders are taking the outside uh of the curve okay so that the centrifugal force will not be uh feel too much okay and we will reduce the 
as uh, the radius uh, become larger and the uh, super elevation uh, become higher, you will feel less centrifugal force. Okay, instead of is going on to you horizontally, now it will become okay. The uh, uh, composition. Okay, if you, I believe, I believe is uh, I showed that in a uh, previous class, isn't it? Okay, where your car is being pushed outside. Okay. And then you have the component here, the normal component. Okay, that's the component is pushing you. Okay. So that's the component of the the uh, the force. And then we try to uh, use the super elevation, okay, to uh, avoid you being from being pushed to the to the outside. Okay, and then a convenient arrangement of uh, applying super elevation, and then flexibility in widening the sharp curve. Why? Because when we have the uh, transition curve in there, okay, we can gradually, gradually uh, widen our our curve. Okay, and we have the full width of what we want in our circular curve. And of course, it'll look much, much better from the top view if it is properly designed. And I believe I've shown you some of the pictures, okay, of our ramps to the highway. And that is where we put the transition curve in, okay. And then we go through circular curve and then back to transition, even though that is not a, a real transition, it is like so-called spiral or we call it a uh, diamond interchange okay now for the basic formula of a spiral okay this is the the basic formula in physics or uh, to calculate the spiral but atj has uh, simplify it okay this in atj okay this is the old one this is the new one what is lp okay that is length of our uh, transition curve okay our speed radius gravity super elevation okay and then that is the rate of centrifugal acceleration and normally that will be given okay range from 0 0.3 to 0 0.9 meter per second cube okay when we use this remember i, I said before when we use this equation without any number in it meaning that we have to use proper unit if this is meter, this is meter per second cube. Meter cube per second cube, meter per second. Okay. And then this is meter, this is uh, your gravity, and then this, no unit in there. Okay. And then this is, again, to counter this, okay, per second cube, and then this is your radius. Okay. That is the basic uh, equation okay but when it is given like this even though the value a little bit off okay when it's given like this 0 0.214 v cube rc meaning that v is in kilometer per hour and L is in meter, okay? R is in meter and C is again uh, this value here, okay? 0 0.3 to 0 0.91, okay? That is in, the, in the, the new ATJ. Oh, you don't have the notes. So, uh, you don't have this example 6 there. 
Okay, let's look for this one. A curve has been designed using combination of circular and spiral for 90 km per hour. Deflection angle is 1530. Side friction of 0 0.12. Super elevation of 6%. And radial acceleration maximum that they, they use is just 0 0.9. De determine the minimum radius of curve. And remember, when we do the calculation, that is the minimum radius okay by all means try to set the radius at side at least that minimum value or higher than that minimum value okay do not go below that value okay and the length of the transition curve and the total length of the curve okay and later i'll talk uh, about this the super elevation table, the method of attaining, attaining. I believe the method of attaining super elevation I already show you, okay, just now, and the widening. Okay. Allah. Allah. Oh, I already uh, fixed that. Okay, now. Given the speed of the speed of 90 km per hour, deflection angle of 15. Okay. Allah Akbar Kabiro. Okay. Speed 90, deflection angle. Okay. That's why I put that is delta, not alpha. So in your notes there, I believe still alpha. So change it to delta because that is the deflection angle here. That is delta. Okay, and set friction of 12%, E of 6%, and C of 0 0.9. Okay, if you calculate the radius of the curve, that is the radius of the circular curve that you need, as usual, using the equation that we seen before, which is V squared divided by 1 to 7 E plus F. Okay, so you got... 354.33 okay let's say 355 do not use 354 okay you should at least higher than that value or you can use 354.33 okay but normally we round it up okay to one meter okay so 355 and then put it back in the equation before lp okay v cube Divide by one, uh, multiply by one minus all those things. And then your length of spiral is 33 meter. Okay, this LP, 33 meter. Okay, and then we have another 33 here. Okay, now. Let's look at this angle. That delta, okay, consists of angle for spiral, two angle for spiral, and one angle for circular curve. And as I said before, circular curve going to be much shorter, okay, because it has been, Allah Akbar, it has been shifted down, okay, when we introduce spiral curve, our circular curve is shifted down and shortened. Okay. So we need to find the angle for this spiral. Okay. And the angle for the spiral is using this equation there. Okay. That is the equation what you get in survey. In survey, yeah. Okay, so you got 2.63 degree. And remember alpha plus 2 uh, spiral angle equal to your delta, which is 1530. Okay, so you got 1530, 15.5 15 .15 15 minus 2, 2.63. Okay, then you get your 
alpha your new circular curve angle your new circular curve angle okay which is 10.24 degree okay and then you calculate back your length of circular curve okay okay and then sorry to say okay there are a lot of mistake in this uh example actually that is not eta that is alpha okay lb lengkung bulat or circular curve are 2 pi alpha 2 pi alpha divided by 360 okay that is not uh delta that should be alpha okay whatever you have here okay of course they use theta why because that is the the standard equation okay but that theta is actually equal to alpha now and then you got your length of 63.45 so the question asks you for the minimum radius you got the minimum radius length of transition curve you got length of transition curve and the total length of curve the total length of curve is lp plus lb plus lp okay transition curve plus circular curve plus transition curve okay so you got the allah you got 33 okay 33 and 63.45 so that is the total length of your curve 33 plus 63 from 45 plus 33 okay as i said uh this curve has been shortened okay let's check what is the actual circular curve if you use 1530 r which is 35 Okay, so so if you use that, you're going to have this circular curve of the length of 96 meter, 96.04 meter, okay? That is the, the original circular curve length, 96 meter. Now we have only 63 meter, but we introduce and as a 66 meter of spiral curve okay any question on this uh, example okay i just got the answer from wong okay said okay Okay, now let's look at this uh, Allah Akbar Kabirah. Let's look at this video. Okay. Okay, this, you, you can find this in the uh, green book. Okay. Esto. Just uh, showing the the design and then this uh, the visualization okay do look at this allah akbar kabiro do look at the the left hand side of the the photo that show you the drawing of the curve
Okay, you show what is good and what is not good. Okay, as you can see at the uh, left hand side, okay, the the red line they showing your car you are driving through. Okay. Okay, now it's going into a circular curve, but combined with some horizontal uh, vertical curve there. Okay. You have two short vertical curve. And you are going through vertical uh, horizontal curve. Okay. So this is the vertical curve there. Allah Akbar. Okay. That is when you put too many vertical curve, short vertical curve. Okay, this is the one big vertical curve. Okay, plus the horizontal curve. Okay, uh, and look at your side distance on that horizontal curve. Okay, you don't have ample side distance. Okay, this is a good side distance. Okay, and then you go on vertical and horizontal curve at the same time. Okay, this is much better design compared to the previous uh, at the start of the video. Okay, see how they got they got the vertical curve and horizontal curve together with good side distance. Okay, and again, a good uh, combination of horizontal and vertical curve. And then you're going on the vertical curve. Okay, this is a curve with a large radius, which is much better looking. Okay, this the small one. Okay, and then you are coming to a better curve. Okay, that's why I try to avoid using the minimum radius. Okay, so this is the 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 curve going uh, on the right and on the left. So creating an S curve. Okay, normally you, you'll get this uh, with your software, okay? When you have the software, you can uh, animate them. Okay, that's very sharp curve there. A okay, much pleasant one. Okay, so this animation is from the driver's point of view. You can even have an animation of from the bird's eye point of view. A bird's eye view, driver's view, okay, not point of view. Okay, you cannot see. That's too too high of a vertical curve. 
Okay, normally for that case, if you're a two lane road, it will be a solid uh, line where the, uh, the overpassing is prohibited. Okay, so that's uh, on the H2, and I believe this one, uh, okay, uh, this uh, I believe the, the one that I've shown before, okay, so how the super elevation is needed, okay, if it's not, uh, okay, this is the force that I, I, I told you before, okay, if there's no super elevation, what will happen, the car will slide to the side, okay. Those are all the forces that act on that car. Okay. Uh, that is the same curve, but with uh, 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 not enough super elevation. But if you put the super elevation in, what will happen? Your car will uh, stick to the, to the curve. Okay, if you put the super elevation in, okay, that's how they, they put the super elevation. Okay, this is what I want to, to tell you. Okay, I just told you, okay, normal camber and then super elevation runoff and then full super elevation. And then it goes back uh, the, other, the other way. Okay. Okay, this is normally how we draw the, how we raise the uh, inside compared to the outside, uh, how we raise the outside compared to the inside. Okay, that's where the car goes. Okay, and full super elevation in circular curve, and then getting back to normal camber and at the transition curve. Okay, and this video I already uploaded it in uh, e-learning. I believe it's in e-learning. Both of these videos. Okay, any question? But fast eh? we now is uh, we already in vertical alignment. Any question on uh, circular curve on uh, transition curve? Okay. Those are both for horizontal curve, and then we already saw the video on uh, the do's and the don'ts of the curve. Okay, do not put too many vertical curve, small vertical curve. Do not put too many uh, horizontal curve close to each other, and avoid using the minimum radius. Okay, try to use uh, as big radius as you can, if the area permit. Okay. This vertical element, I believe, uh, gonna be short, and then, oh, we are, we're gonna finish our chapter four before before time even, okay. Okay, it's okay, because if, uh, if we finish, uh, before the semester semester ends okay we can uh, use that for review if you want okay let's look at vertical alignment why why is fast because there's no question and why there's no question i just wonder why there is no question okay and hopefully i believe next week gonna be uh, more question why because i leave you with a few uh, exercise for you to do and if you do it then there will be question but if you do not do it again there will be no question okay so the class uh, speed will depend on your participation and your question okay if there's no question I just keep on continue okay now let's look at vertical alignment what is vertical alignment? Vertical alignment, as we can see from the previous uh, video, the first video there, okay, start off with the vertical alignment. Vertical alignment will 
or can only be seen from the side view. Okay, the horizontal element, you will see the horizontal element in the plan view, but the, uh, the vertical element can only be seen from the side view. Okay, meaning that you have to draw the side view of your road, then you will see the vertical alignment. If you draw the plan view, you can only see the horizontal alignment, even though the vertical alignment is there. So vertical alignment take a shape of a parabola, and you should know the, the uh, characteristic of the parabola. Okay. We can have two vertical curves. Okay. For horizontal curve, we just have circular curve. And to smooth out the entrance and the exit, we introduce the transition curve in that horizontal curve. But for vertical curve, we can either we will either have crest vertical curve or sec vertical curve. Okay. Let's look at where we're gonna have crest. Okay. The normal crest is Allah Akbar Kabiro. Okay, that is crest vertical curve. You have two road going up, and one road going up, and one road going down. Then you're going to have the crest vertical curve. Or, let's say, going up and going up, but of different gradient can have crest vertical curve. Or going down and going down, okay, you again gonna have the crest vertical curve. Okay. So that is three uh, situation where you can have crest vertical curve. This is positive gradient, this negative gradient, this is positive gradient, this is positive gradient, this is negative gradient, and that is negative gradient. So even though you have negative, negative, you can still have the crest vertical curve. Let's look at sec vertical curve. The normal sec, Allah Akbar the normal sec vertical curve Okay, you got the negative and the positive there. So you have the curve. Okay, or you can have Okay, a small change of gradient. Okay, negative. Allah, but that's negative. Negative and positive like that, or even you got negative. Allah, negative. What happened to my? Why can I get that off? Okay, you got negative and negative. Okay. This negative and negative, you still have the uh, sec vertical curve. Okay, so sec vertical curve is going like that, and crest vertical curve is going like that. Okay, so this is sec, that is crest. Okay, these are the three for crest vertical curve, and these are the three shape for sec vertical curve where you can have. The sec vertical curve there. Okay. Let's look at the properties of the vertical curve. Okay. The initial grade we call G1. That is G1 here. Okay. Doesn't matter if it's go like that. This is also still G1. The first one we enter from the from the left. That is G1. Okay. 
and the second one of course going to be g2 okay pv c or pvi inflection point okay is the point where if you extend your road into the air okay ah, this different from from uh, horizontal curve you extend your road uh straighten your road okay and then it intersect somewhere maybe on the surface somewhere uh close to the side of the mountain but for vertical curve if you extend your road into the air okay maybe you have the hill like this okay so what you have you're gonna Allah you have your road going up okay and then and the one going down like that so this is pvi is somewhere in the air this is the ground level okay so if this is the ground okay then this is the road that you design okay. and this is another road that you you're going to design and then again intersect here okay and you're going to put the curve in there okay that's going to be crest vertical curve and then you're going to put the curve in here that's going to be sec vertical curve so this is point of intersection okay the point of intersection of the initial tangent grade and the final tangent grade is pvi here okay the point where your straight intersect with the vertical curve that's a uh, pvc point of uh, beginning of your vertical curve and then the point where your vertical curve again intersect with your not intersect uh, uh, join with your uh, straight graded uh, grade gradient gonna be pvt okay and of your vertical curve And the solid value between G1 and G2 is called A. Okay, that's we call A, G1, uh, the difference between G1 and G2. Okay, I just put the note here. Okay, in some book, you might use the term that I use. I Usually, I use this term. Beginning of vertical curve and end of vertical curve. Okay, for, remember for horizontal curve, I use bc and uh ec okay that's i use uh in a uh, horizontal curve beginning of the curve and end of the curve so for vertical curve we just put v in there beginning of vertical curve and end of vertical curve okay those are some of the notation that use in the text so if you uh refer to some books it will use pvc some book might use bvc okay some book use pvt and another you uh, another book may use evc okay the point of intersection is pvt there okay pvt pvc pvi okay. the length of the vertical curve okay this is the length of vertical curve. Okay. But since it is parabolic, we just said it is almost Allah Akbar. Almost the same as the horizontal length between these two points. Okay. So we said this is equal to this one. Okay. The length of vertical uh, curve is the horizontal between uh, distance between pvc and pvt okay and we uh, 
assume that it is halfway okay the pvi occur halfway between pvc and pvt meaning that the length have the equal tangent doesn't matter okay if this is like that okay still we assume that half of the length occur there okay this one gonna be equal to that length okay all these properties will make calculation of vertical curve much much easier compared to the horizontal curve okay a a the difference between gradient 2 and gradient 1 okay and then if you go by the change in grade per 100 meter remember per 100 meter 100 100 meter equal to one station okay equal to one station 100 meter are this uh normally being used by the surveyor okay uh don't 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 say oh why, why do we, we need to divide it into 100 meter why do we put it into kilometer okay the surveyor use that okay for example where do we use this 100 meter or station okay if you are driving along our expressway for example okay they will say for example if let's say you have problem with your car and then you call the plus line okay the operator will ask you where are you where you are right now okay where uh, is your car what you need to do is you need to give them the change or the kilometer post okay normally on the side of the roadway it will say kilometer 10.2 meaning that it is 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 1 10 is okay 10.2 is kilometer uh Ten ten point two kilometer away. Okay, easier to say. Okay, ten point two kilometer away. Okay, so if it is kilometer ten point two, it is uh, ten point two kilometer away from starting of our uh, highway change. Okay, so where is kilometer? zero if you are talking about highway okay when you enter toll skudai what's the kilometer there toll skudai anybody kilometer proper toll skudai Anybody know what was the kilometer for Skudai? Not sure, huh? Okay. So next time when you you let's say you pay the toll, okay, look at the kilometer there. Okay. And then along the highway, okay, they will put, I believe, every 0 0.2 kilo, kilometer they put. Okay, they put the sign with the uh, white, white background and then green in color, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. That's the kilometer post for highway. Okay. That is for highway. As for our uh, normal federal road, okay, this kilometer post can be found in every state, kilometer zero. Okay. And for Johor Bahru, where is kilometer zero for Johor Bahru?
Where is kilometer zero for Johor Bahru? Okay, I love to 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 snap picture with kilometer zero. Okay, when I find kilometer zero, I will snap picture. So if you let's say go through my Facebook, if you uh, go browse through my photo, uh, every place where I go, I find kilometer zero, I'll snap the photo. Okay, where's kilometer zero for our uh, Johor Bahru, in Johor Bahru? Okay, kalau tak tahu. Balai Polis Kudai. Kudai Police Station. Batu berapa tu? Balai Polis Kudai orang panggil Balai, balai Batu berapa? Because people call it Batu. Apa pergi Balai Polis Batu 10, Batu 12, Batu 14. So Kudai Batu berapa? Oh, tak tahu juga kamu eh. Payah juga ni. Okey, aku nak. Batu? Batu 10. Bat, batu 10. Irfan kata batu 10. So, why did they call it batu 10? In fact, dulu if you look at uh, your address dulu, dia akan ada batu berapa. Okay. That's why some of the address is still batu 20, batu 15. Okay. So, why did they say balai polis batu 10? Balai Polis Batu 10. Okay, Irfan kata Batu 10 tadi. Why did they call Batu 10? Ni saja, saja nak apa ni sikit. Okay, because it is 10 miles away from Batu 0. It is 10 miles away from Batu 0. Oh, Allah Allah, saya padam pula. Okay, so where is Batu Zero? Or where is kilometer? Now the, in, in Malaysia we use kilometer lah. Okay, previously why we use mile? Because we were under British. British use mile. So that's why the old address is in mile. Batu. Okay, but as for now, they call it kilometer. So Batu 10 and kilometer 10, gonna, uh, Batu kosong and kilometer kosong going to be the same place. Okay. And this place was used by the postman. Okay, this distance was used by the postman. So that Batu 10, Balai Polis Batu 10, it is 10 miles away from post office. Because the distance is used by the postman. Okay, so for you, Okay, if you want to uh, be like me, okay, uh, looking for Batu Kosong or looking for kilometer zero, okay. So when you find any, not the post office, eh? this is the uh, main post office, pejabat post besar, meaning that you can find kilometer zero, okay, kilometer zero at pejabat post besar Johor Bahru it is in front of pejabat post besar Johor Bahru okay and i believe uh, yesterday i just wish birthday to my uh, student okay and the photo showed there they are taking pictures at kilometer 0 in Johor Bahru okay they take my challenge okay i said i want you to find kilometer zero in Johor. So they search for it and they found it and they are eagerly uh, show it to me. Okay, they even make a video out of it. Okay, showing that they found kilometer zero. Okay, so if you are, let's say you are in Kelantan, for example, you can find kilometer zero in Kota Baru. You can find kilometer zero in uh, Pasir Mas. Okay. Any big town, you can find it. Okay. Last time, I 
I do the TIA, tra uh, the traffic study in Lipis, and I post in front of kilometers with uh, Prof OCP. And uh, uh, three years back, we do the, four years back, we do the uh, project for P, uh, PAJ, okay? Uh, I was in uh, Moor, and I saw kilometer zero in Moor, and again, uh, the Tosman and myself post in front of that kilometer zero. Okay, and he also addicted to kilometer zero by now. Okay, so if you are in your hometown, okay, you can search for kilometer zero by looking at your post office, your main post, main old post office, huh? not the new post office. The main old post office, not the new one. Okay. Okay, that's just about kilometer zero. Just to uh, take you away from this uh, basic formula of vertical curve. Okay. As, actually, I'm just explaining this 100 meter. Okay. So, if it is uh, per 100 meter, R is... The algebraic change divided by the length. The length in 100 meter. Okay. The length in station. Okay. 100 of meter in station. Okay. This is the basic uh, formula. And I believe this formula has been introduced to you by Dr. Razwan or uh associate professor dr mushairi okay in your survey class okay. how to find the elevation of a vertical curve at any point okay remember we have the uh, we have the what uh, what happened We have the Y and the X. Okay, as you go along, let's say this is the curve. Okay, that's the Y. Okay, the elevation of your, and then this X. Okay, that's Y. Okay, so Y, we always refer from the left side. Okay, the calculation always from the left side. Okay. Elevation yx is again r, the rate of change. x squared, this is the, remember this is the equation for parabola. Okay, that is the parabolic equation. Okay, x squared, x and y naught. That is the parabolic equation. Or the quadratic equation. Okay. If you might say it. And then. To find the highest point. Or the lowest point. Okay. Remember back your. I'm not sure. Uh, what do you call it? Calculus? Dy dx? Is it in calculus? Or. Is it in calculus dy dx? I think yes, doctor. In calculus, eh? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the applicable uh, application of it. Okay. For example, if you want to find the volume, do you need to integrate or do you need to uh, differentiate? To find the volume. To find the area. So, uh, to find the area, integrate, eh? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you see, meaning that what you learn in your mathematics, in your physics, in your, uh, if you're a doctor, in your biology, okay, you're going to use it. You will be using it. Okay. That is why, actually, it is very important for the mathematics lecturer to instill your interest in using 
what you learn in mathematics. Okay, if they are able to, let's say, explain to you and then use the example in your daily life, then you will be uh, more interested to learn mathematics and much, much easier for you to understand. Okay, uh, this is one of the situation where we use what you learn in mathematics okay as like uh, our friend said okay to get the area you integrate okay okay now and i'm not going to go in detail of how we get this okay because that's the basic dy dx you differentiate that okay so you'll get this okay if you forget how to differentiate then look at back okay how you differentiate it okay so it's become 2 r uh, x divided by 2 isn't it that's why you end up with r x okay and then you differentiate dx you got you got g Okay, uh, let's uh, finish our class with the video. And again, I've, uh, the first video, uh, most of these videos, I believe, okay, has uh, been shown before. This is uh, the side distance, the video of the vertical alignment and, alignment and the side distance. Okay, if it is a straight road, okay, of course, your side distance is there, so you can easily see the cow. Okay, and you can break in time before hitting that cow. Okay. And then side distance is actually very important in vertical curve, in crest vertical curve. Okay. When you are going up the crest vertical curve, you will not be able to see the obstruction downhill. Yeah, that's the problem, is it? But if you are on sec vertical curve, okay, that's crest. And then when you are going sec vertical curve down there, okay, your side distance is there. Okay. And remember, uh, my task given to you, what is the headlight side distance? Okay. So the headlight side distance is applicable for your sec vertical curve okay for example if you are going down this curve okay let's say on the daylight if the obstruction is here if you are here you can see the obstruction because that's your eye okay but at night okay if the obstruction is here your headlight just can just light up to this point, meaning that you, Allah Akbar, you cannot see this obstruction. You can see it during the daylight, but at night time, you cannot see it. So this is the headlight side distance. Okay, the distance that you can see using your headlight. And maybe if you turn on your high beam, Okay, maybe you will get to that point and you still cannot see unless your high beam is very high. Okay, normally you have the high beam is just straight. Okay, okay, if this is the car, okay, the low beam is like that, and then the high beam is just like that. It's not like that, the high beam. Okay, it's not straight like that, the high beam. The high beam is just a little bit further. Okay, if you adjust your high beam like that. Okay, and then you yourself, when you turn the high beam, you cannot see the whatever happened on the on the road. Okay, uh, I, I've shown that before, and we also have seen this before. Okay, you cannot see this car on the crest vertical curve. Okay, 
that can vanish. Okay, so this is the no passing zone. Okay, ah, so sight distance is much much more important on uh, vertical curve. Okay, of course it is important also for horizontal curve where let's say if that's the horizontal curve and there's obstruction over here okay when there's obstruction you cannot see beyond that point meaning that if there's a car here and you are here you will not be able to see that car and if you overtake some other car in front of you on this lane you might have a head-on collision is uh the oncoming car okay it is okay if there's no obstruction here okay if there's no obstruction here okay but normally in our even horizontal curve we have trees and whatever there that will block our our sight distance Okay, uh, we stopped uh, there for today and uh, next meeting we're going to look, uh, finish our vertical curve and then uh, I may, inshallah, I'll try to get uh, uh, some more uh, example of the final question on this chapter 4 because chapter 4 uh, only occur in final because test 2 cover chapter 2 and chapter 3 and we miss chapter 4 so chapter 4 you can only see the question for chapter 4 in final and I'll try to find the uh, more application okay rather than a simple of for finding the PV PT all those things okay I'll find the question that is uh, application wise meaning that uh, for example, to set back the billboard, how far to set back the billboard, okay? And can you put the uh, broken line for the car to pass, to overtake, if you have this uh, kind of sight distance, okay? And how to design a road curve in a hilly area, for example, okay? Because we have those, a lot of example of vertical curve and horizontal curve in Malaysia, okay? Especially when you are traveling from west going to east, okay? We go uh, on top of, what's that Banjaran? Banjaran Himalaya, eh, Banjaran Titiwangsa, eh? Banjaran? What's the ridge that we have uh, in the middle of uh, Semenanjung? Banjaran apa? Anybody Banjaran apa? Ah, sudah. Tadi tadi tanya pasal calculus. Okay. Now tanya pasal geografi pula. Azim kata Banjaran Titiwangsa eh. Okay. So saya percaya Azim kata lah Banjaran Titiwangsa. Saya pun dah, dah apa lama tinggalkan tinggalkan apa ni geografi ni. Okay. Hari ni kita belajar banyak sikit. Hari ni macam-macam kita kita tengok. Okay. So apa daripada... Uh, apa saya cerita tadi eh tapi pada kilometer okey kilometer kosong kita cerita lepas tu uh, we talking about kilometer zero and then we are talking about uh, dy dx okey and then now we are talk, asking about what uh, what reach we have in the middle between east and west of malaysia okey so in malaysia in malaysia you have all those things if you are going to genting highland if you are going to cameron highland okey you will go through vertical and horizontal curve and you can see the effect of sight distance the effect of the super elevation the effect of the gradient that being introduced okay to your driving uh, performance okay for example if you are going to cameron highland Okay, going to the Tehbo plantation. Okay, what's the speed that you can achieve? What's the speed being posted? 
And I believe if you're going to Cameron Highland, the curve there, they set to the minimum radius. And some of the curve not even met the minimum radius of JKR. And it is the effort of the driver that hung when they go through that uh, circular curve because the line of sight or sight distance is very short. So you will hear a lot of honking. Okay. They're not angry at you, but they are warning you, hey, I'm in front here. Okay. So if you hear the honk, you know that there are cars coming from in front. And so that, that is the the uh, action taken by the driver. Okay, for safe driving and in that area. Okay, so we stop our class here uh, with uh, Tasbih Kafara and Surawal As. Okay, and uh, good luck. Make sure you uh, review your chapter two and chapter three, and then do whatever uh, question exercise that you have. Because we're gonna have our test uh, next week, okay, on the twenty second at eight thirty p.m. Okay, so is that? Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Thank you, Okay, okay.